to unpack that to me that's one of the classic uh comics journal interviews but yeah yeah i mean why why were you laughing well the quick story (laughs) without going into it is i got in an argument with a department store santa about (laughs) jack kirby's role in the creation of spider-man ed piskor here i'm with tom scioli and I woke up this morning to several emails because they made announcements for this coming year, 2020's Free Comic Book Day selections. The gold label uh, Free Comic Book Day comics, the ones that stores have to order. And the cat's out of the bag, dude. It's been announced. Like the the Kirby book, uh, the, the biographical comic that you have been working on for years has been announced dude congratulations man thanks how does it feel did you even know that this was going uh to be out of the bag no and i don't know that the, the publisher knew either because i told them once it was out I, um because it, it it is like like you know they want to do things a certain way and they want to announce it when they want to announce it but there's certain things that are just built into the system right that, so like for for one it's been listed on amazon there's been like a placeholder on amazon for a while for yeah. like a few weeks now so like here and there people would be like hey what's going going on is this that is this that thing you're talking and i, I was just silent because it's like hey you know like they want to announce it when they want to announce it and then like I, yeah i saw this thing maybe the same around the same time time you did um the announcements for free comic book day and it's like okay well this is a little different than like a a sort of semi-anonymous listing on Amazon. This is like, you know, press releases going out. People are talking, it's it's in the Hollywood Reporter, you know, and it's like their headline is like Vin Diesel and a Kirby, a Jack Kirby biography was like the headline. So so I just, you know, I I didn't want to, you know, um, step on anybody's toes or anything. So I just like real quick contacted the publisher and said like, are, are we talking about this thing now? What's going on? And then they're like, oh, we'll get back to you. And they're like, yeah, we're, we're talking about it. Go, you know, go for it. You know, <laughs> Good on them for making the steps to kind of invade the direct market yeah. comic book shops. Oh, because yeah. Because this is not a comic book publisher. No. Who's, who's a publisher? This it's thing? 10 speed. This is going to be me talking. Uh, say nothing. Okay. But... Uh, Good on Ten Speed to get you on the the on the job to put a graphic novel together for them. Cause I saw some of them other comics, man. Like the RZA said in Wu Tang Forever, shit been weak. Good for them to get involved with you to put this uh, this book together, man. It it did. Um, it really uh, was a lucky stroke for me that the like like one of the early publishers I was talking to kind of you know weren't total like they they didn't commit they were like oh we're not sure we're still thinking about it and so in that time you know i did you know get talk to an agent things like that and and then it kind of you know got you know some other things going and then and then like i got you know like like an offer you know that i couldn't refuse or whatever you know yeah for sure man uh this is huge i feel like this is the book that you've been preparing to make your entire life Sure. I mean, um, and and just even from just like a public perception standpoint, it's like, oh, Tom Shelley, that's that Kirby guy. That's that Kirby, the Kirby guy. So like that's that's the handle people used to describe me as the Kirby guy. So it's like, you know, OK, well, here's the Kirby book from the Kirby guy. You know, do you at least want to uh, praise me for uh, <laughs> t- t- telling you to put the Kirby strip online uh, to begin with and sure, build and, up and a lot of initial buzz? Well, I mean, putting it online was not you, but putting on it on Instagram. Instagram specifically was you. I mean, uh, you know, there's, I mean, I don't need to be prompted to praise you, especially regarding this book, because you were, you and, and Jim also w- were like, uh, you know, I had a couple different things that I was considering working on. And you guys were like, this Kirby thing, this is it. This is like, you got you got to do this. And, um, and even, uh, I think at one point I was still kind of like, oh, well, you know, like, like, you know, this and that. And then, and then you were like, okay, if you don't do this Jack Kirby book, the next book I do is going to be a Jack Kirby book. <laughs> so it's like that that definitely that that kind of thought lights a fire because it is one of those things where any but like Eric Larson could have done this, you know, 20 years ago, uh, Frank Miller and uh Mark Evanier, they weren't talking about doing a graphic novel, but they were talking about doing like sort of the ultimate Kirby book that they were going to do together. And then, you know, that didn't happen. You know, Evanier did did something, you know, a Kirby book, but not the one he, the not the, the epic that he and Frank were talking about. So it is like, you know, time's a waste. In, and even um, when his, uh, when Jack Kirby's 100th birthday came and went, I thought, you know what, I should have had this thing like 
ready to go by his 100th birthday. Like, that's just stupid. And and, and I'm real lucky that, you know, an Eric Larson or, you know, or, or just, just to name somebody who's like a huge, or, or a Neil Gaiman, somebody who's like a huge comics fan who has, you know, who could get the ball rolling probably easier than I could, you know, hasn't done it, but, but, I, but I get it, you know. Uh, this kind of uh, like like you've done biographical works, nonfiction, and and uh, now you're doing like your sort of imaginary thing, and it's so much more fun to do your imaginary thing where you're just making up the world. Nobody can tell you what's right and what's wrong in your world, uh, so it, it it's it's not it's not as easy as drawing you know uh, you know you know a bunch of goofy stuff. We're going to be able uh, you're going to have somebody to commiserate with or at least to vent to because probably several of the names you mentioned and others are going to uh, probably uh, have something to say about the book. They're, they're just going to be, you're going to get a lot of feedback because this is going to be your biggest project. I, I promise you that there's going to be plenty of good, but nobody gets unanimous praise. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I am going to be in your ear <laughs> saying, Tom, you got a problem with somebody? You don't address them online <laughs> uh, unless they are more famous than you. Mm -hmm. And just vent to me. <laughs> just, just, just call me up, rain or shine, day or night. And when some douchebag comes out and freaking get your temperature up, <laughs> just, just vent to me, man. Okay. You know, it's, it's, it's important. You'll see what yeah. I mean if, if you are. Oh, uh, I believe you. <laughs> From what I remember, when you were putting this on on Instagram, you were working toward. Uh, the hundredth birthday, having a big chunk of this thing mm -hmm. out, or maybe like one trade yeah, I, or something. I, I well, yeah. Mm -hmm. But Fantastic Four Grand Design, the opportunity for that came up, and what a perfect segue to get you into the Kirby biography. Yeah, and that that was um, like that just fell in my lap, and like, can you imagine like a better way to go than that to do like Jack Kirby's signature comic book? And then follow that up with now here's the life of Jack Kirby. Like you could, you know, you couldn't have engineered that better. And it, it really just happened. It just fell in my lap. And the um, are you going to praise me for that one? Well, of course, yeah, <laughs> 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 I, I, yeah. I mean, if we sat down and listed everything, you know, it's because it's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Grand design doesn't exist without you. I'm, I'm so, just fucking around. But no, but, uh, no. But I, you know, honestly, uh, you know, like it is, it is funny. Like it is, like you know, one, two, three, four, like. Uh, you know, yeah, you created the and <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> no, just <laughs> working <laughs> uh, like working on the Fantastic Four Grand Design thing. It's just funny because I expected, you know, you'd you'd hear like, you know, like I expected to get like a lot of crap, and I didn't. Like I'm surprised, but there were like a couple people who were like, you know, hey. You know, you're no Jack Kirby, you're no Stan Lee, but what I didn't expect was you're no Ed Bisker. <laughs> like I've gotten a couple of those. And, and might I say, <laughs> the people who have been coming up to me, like at my signings and stuff, uh, I did not draw Fantastic Four Grand Design. Like, right. pe like your name is on the masthead. Yes, my name is on the masthead, but on and your variant cover, um, like your signature is probably like the same size as mine, you know? And, and I didn't put any kind of, like, I didn't say like by Tom Shealy, I just put like Tom Shealy above the masthead. And in the credits, for it, I don't say like art by Tom Scioli, writing by. Tom, I just have Tom Scioli, Fantastic Four, Grand Design, and then it's like you know, uh, C. B. Sibolsky, yeah, uh, yeah. um, uh, Fantastic Four created by Jack Kirby and Stanley, you know, stuff like that. You know, I figure like having your name above, like says it all. But I guess I guess not in every case. When's this book coming out? Um, well, the Free Comic Book Day version is coming out uh, on Free Comic Book Day, uh, uh, you know, May twentieth. Not uh, not one hundred percent sure when like the book itself. Uh, they're going to either have the book out um, by San Diego Comic Con, or at least have like an initial run, you know, ready for San Diego Comic Con, and then like the wider release, you know, sometime if, after that. If we go by Amazon, it's July. July, okay, yeah, this that sounds right. Coming out, yeah. And uh, right at this minute, see, I love the kayfabe effect. Whenever mm -hmm. we promote something, man, and when we see in action immediately that the channel's doing something. The Amazon rank at this moment, because there hasn't been a big announcement in right, any no, way, this, yeah. it's ranked 1,400,000 something. So K favors, get your pre-orders <laughs> in right now because I want to see that number sure, yeah. skyrocket mm -hmm. yeah, just yeah. for my own edification, mm -hmm. man. Uh, what great promo. So this, this uh, free comic book day comic, this business card is sure. going to hit every comic shop two months 
before uh, it comes out, dude. Very sexy. Yeah, I, I mean, um, like we we had books out on the same free comic book day, uh, 2014, and I mean, it was huge. Like that was Transformers versus GI Joe, and it was a gold uh, book, just like just like this one. And I saw the effect. Like that was that was like a, a life changer for me. So I, like ever since then, I've been like. Oh man, you know, uh, free comic book. You gotta have a book on free comic book day. Uh, and I, I had one other, like I, I had like a small role in a in a free comic book day book after. But then, it's been a couple years, and now you know. It's, uh, there's a part of me that wants to cut just this part out because uh -huh. the jobbers that listen will start to like want free comic book day comics and, yeah. and uh, compete good. with us. No, that's a good point. Uh, and maybe we'll cut this part out too. But like, I feel like. I'm like a good person to have do your free comic book day because like like with the Transformers thing, I put a thousand percent effort into that. Like I I didn't sleep. Like I just put everything because I because I understood what this opportunity meant. That like this is a chance to like show your stuff to like a much wider audience, and and put your best foot forward. And I see what other people do Same on free comic book day. Hits. Yeah, and it's like this is this is business as usual. Like what are you doing? Like get some like get somebody who really understands to do it. But but you're right. Like if we put that out there, then now now everybody everybody knows that. You know that was our <laughs> secret. <laughs> uh, Kirby, comics greatest penciler, and you use him pencil. To uh, to tell this story, man, his tool of choice, his his the main weapon in his arsenal. Very yeah. smart. Yeah, yeah, it it really like came came together. Like it was just like kind of the perfect uh, medium for the for the message, and and I've sort of like accentuated like like the pencil as a symbol, like the pencils on the on the cover, and it's like an iconic number two pencil, which isn't necessarily what Kirby used, but it's just like that, that, you know, cartooning, the symbolism, you know, it's, it's like, that's a very powerful symbol than the number two pencil. Yeah. That Ticonderoga gimmick. Mm -hmm. man. Yellow, green, red, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's, there's a bunch right there. <laughs> I started using them all over again. Some questions I've seen coming up already, uh, with the cover images out there, man, you have a unique approach to the Kirby character, mm -hmm. big eyes. Sure. What's the, what's the idea there, man? Because this is the first time you'll be asked that question. Yes. Know that that question is going to come down the pike a lot, man. And you must have, uh, you must have your reasons. Well, yeah. I mean, like I test drove this concept f a little bit. I, I did like a little one pager of like you know Jack Kirby, and then being on the phone with like Nazis who are telling him he's they're going to come kick his ass and stuff. And like and and I did like a page where he's telling the guy he's going to slam the. The piano on on the guy's fingers, yes. you know, the guy who who who's uh, in love with Roz Roz uh, uh, Goldstein, and so, like, and I did it with drawing, like, you know, a realistic Jack Kirby, like Jack Kirby as he is, um, but it's kind of like there's that Scott McCloud uh, thing that this thing Scott McCloud talks about the the masking effect, yeah. which you see in Disney movies, you see in um, a lot of manga, where. Um, the, a a simplified cartoony character um, facilitates reader identification, and this is uh, this story is told by Jack Kirby. Like it's it's Jack Kirby narrating. Uh, it's like like I want you to be like in Jack Kirby's world, and so you know this kind this kind of draws you in, and it's just um, you know it just like it just worked it, it worked better, and then I sort of went back and changed some of the things I'd already drawn with a realistic Jack Kirby. And uh, I mean, there's, there, you know, there's there's a lot of other sort of side things you could kind of point to. Like um, I had been reading the um, the uh, Tezuka, ma the manga, the life story of Tezuka, which had a similar, like sort of, it's like a cartoony Tezuka in a realistic world. Just worked worked great. Like it, it worked really well. And also like, um, you know, when when I start off and Jack Kirby's like a little kid, you know, and he's got sort of kid proportions and, and he's like very cute and very likable. And then he sort of, you know, grows up into you know, basically like a middle aged man. And and um, just like it's kind of like, OK, like, are we reading reading the Vince Coletta story? Like, OK, which one's Vince Coletta and which one's Jack Kirby? It's kind of like, you, you know, like you're sort of asking a lot of a reader to endure uh, hundreds of pages of my drawing of like middle-aged men, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it goes down a little easier if it's this sort of cute cartoon character. Where are you at right now? I am at a pretty exciting place. Uh, uh, at this point in the story, I've just finished um, like Kirby's second stint at Marvel. Like like the period that I, I 
feel most people are are interested in what the, you know his his big collaborations with Stan Lee. He just left Marvel and now he's just arrived at uh, DC and Carmine Infantino is telling him like Carmine Infantino was very excited to get Jack Kirby on board coming to DC. And then once he sort of told his editors, his subordinates, they he he had like a mutiny on his hands. He's they were, we're like talking Carmine, Carmine Infantino. Infantino had a mutiny on his hands. They're like we don't like Jack Kirby. We don't like Mar. He's the Marvel guy. We don't like Marvel, and we don't like Jack Kirby. You know, from the last time we worked here. You know, like they they were not very. And like Carmine wanted Kirby to come in and 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 revamp the place, like turn it into a new Marvel. And so it was kind of like you know Kirby had had you know just sort of like lined everything up to like leave Marvel and go to DC, and now it's kind of like you know getting this kind of weirdness. And then he talk he talks to uh, Jack Leibowitz, who who. Um, you know they've sort of had, they'd had their ups and downs, but definitely considered each other friends. Considered each other, and, and this guy was like the president of of National Periodical Publications, president of of, of uh, DC Comics, and talked to him and kind of like you know smoothed everything, you know smoothed things over, and and um, you know they sort of put it to Kirby that like they they'd been looking to sort of refresh Superman, that Superman's you know, gotten kind of stale and they want, and he's like very much rooted in the thirties and they wanted to bring him into the seventies. So they kind of gave Jack Kirby the job to revamp Superman. Uh, so like we're right there, like Jack Kirby's kind of doing, and, and, and sort of the first place that Kirby does that, at least in terms of like creating a comic, it's, it's, it wasn't the first thing that they published of his, but it was, um, the it forever people number one. So that was kind of like the comic where Jack Kirby got to try out some of his new concepts for where he thought Superman should go. So when we cut the camera and we get back to making comics, you're on you're drawing page what of what? Um you know that it's it's hard to say just because I kind of like, okay, I'm gonna fill in back I'm gonna do a page back here to fill in this gap and, and this and that. But um We'll talk both. Yeah, I feel like I'm around page, uh, maybe like page 100, like somewhere in the 140s of like Two, around 200. 200 page book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool, man. So so uh, you're uh, past the point of no return, we'll say. For sure. Yeah. And, and all this time, like working on this, like from the earliest days where it was like, okay, 10 pages in, 20 pages in. The thought in my mind was always like, you know, something might go wrong. You know, there, there could be a million things where this project could could sort of fall apart and it's like oh you know I'm spending a lot of time on this putting a, putting a lot of work into it what if this doesn't work out what if that doesn't work out and now it's like if you know uh, like the entire publishing industry collapses or if there's if if uh, there's some new uh, bug that just eats every piece of paper on the planet or whatever like if this thing doesn't happen it's like so what like i like i've gotten so much out of this process, or and like you said, there's it's the point of no return. But I've gotten so much out. I've learned so much. I've enjoyed it so much that like if 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 it all st it stops today, it's like I you know so what you know. Leading up to connecting with the book agent and mm -hmm. shopping the thing around, how many pages did you have done? Like twenty thirty? No, I I, I mean um, I had about sixty pages yeah. done, and what I sort of found out was that's kind of like a magic number like if you look at agents just for like you know books in general but but um graphic novels too i i think that's like the number they say is like 60 or, or 50 like it's something like we want to see you know the first or we want to see 60 pages of your manuscript before we'll even consider you know and so it's like yeah okay so now i know like that's you know it just happened to be that's how much i had when i was shopping around it was it was perfect it's like oh great i have that but that's good to know for future reference, next time I want to do do a book through this, you know, book market, like you just do sixty pages. I mean, we can do sixty pages like it's nothing, you know. Just do sixty pages, you know, see what happens, shop it around, you know. Yeah, I mean, if you break that down in small chunks, uh, in terms of direct market comics, that is the image or dark horse three issues. Sure, before, three issues. Yeah. Before uh, the submission thing, man. So that that all that all bears out. Mm -hmm. Can we talk a little bit about? connecting with the agent and just like making things happen we haven't really like had a shoot interview with anybody where we talked about like that part of yeah the potential of the comics business man mm -hmm. so you got the 60 pages uh you're about to take a, a offer and we talked you out of it hooked you up <laughs> with, hooked you up with uh with a book agent sure what happens is, what happens from there okay so um 
yeah, a, a book agent. Um, well, first, it's like there's kind of you know like sort of a, a kind of you know scary period because when you're talking to an agent, until you've like officially hired them, until you've signed with them, you're kind of in a negotiation with them. Mm -hmm. You know, like you, you know, and, and, and so it's kind of like, oh, well, where do I, so, you know, I have to sort of negotiate on my, like, you know, there's certain, there's certain things that like an agent is going to um, say like, oh, well, we want this. And, we, and I was talking to like a couple different agents and they'll say like, you know, we want this, we want that. And it's like, now I have to like, where's my agent to help me negotiate this, you know, but I kind of, you know, like I did my due diligence and, 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 and like, I, you know, Maybe if it was like 10 years ago or 20 years ago or something, it would be, but I've done this enough and I've sort of negotiated my own things enough times to be like, okay, I've seen where, I, okay, I, I know what I, have a pretty good idea of what I want, what is sort of standard, what's not standard, what um, they're trying to make the new standard, you know, so you don't like... Got to keep your eyes on exactly, that. Exactly, yeah. So, you know, so so sort of got through that and then, and then you know, uh, and, and some agents... Uh, give you like a um like they give you like a countdown they're like okay well i need to know i need to have an answer yes or no by this day you know it's you know just you know just you know different people do business different and it and it's that's not an out of the ordinary thing like that's that's actually a somewhat common thing so there's just you know there there's you you have to kind of be on your toes a little bit and then and then once once i i signed like i was very confident like i was i was happy with my decision you know like like i i didn't just jump into the, you know and there are moments where it feel like you you know it feels like oh just just pick something you know just just do it even if you have but you know you kind of just make it you know you know this is this is a big decision so Th this is this is such an important piece of work for you uh, mm -hmm. i see it being so life-changing and even from the start like i was always saying like this is the one like you're gonna put your kids through college mm -hmm. with this freaking book so you cannot be hasty man and, and patience is absolutely a virtue, man. So, so you chose the guy, and uh, from that point forward, like, do you just forget about him, let him go off? When does he come back with some with some bites? That's exactly what I did, and um, I I kind of like almost by design. I was kind of like like that's what I wanted to do. Like I knew that that might be a hard thing to do. I might be like you know. Well, well, did he heard anything yet? Whatever, you know, but like my plan was to, yeah, just let it go and then move on. And so um, I had other things that I was, you know, sort of working on the line. And one of them was potentially Fantastic Four Grand Design. That was still, it was a possible. It wasn't a commit. It wasn't like they didn't commit to, but it was like a possible that was out there. And then a couple of things and then GoBots. And it was perfect because I was like, okay, well, I'm going to work. I got to work on something. You know, this is still just... Uh, you know, vaporware. Head, or headspace. Yeah. yeah. So I got to work on. Got to got to pay the bills. So, um, you know, uh, I worked on GoBots, and then the timing like almost worked out perfectly. Like by the time I was wrapping up GoBots, that's when it was like, okay, we have, you know, you know, we have, you know, some offer, and we have like, you know, like a really, you know, solid one, you know, like a really good one. Uh, was know. was he was he shopping that thing around for for? Would you say it's three months? Uh, yeah. It, the summer. Yeah, it felt like it. Yeah, the, yeah, that it. It was like just kind of hadn't didn't really hear much from him, you know, and, and and yeah, it was like a summer. Yeah, probably something like that. Yeah, yeah, three yeah. Months. yeah. If I remember correctly, Ben, it was like it was like an August when like all other book editors <laughs> or on are vacation, on vacation yeah. and this guy was like, I want this book. Yeah. Here. Mm -hmm. And every other editor said. Go be with God. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. The people that I had been talking about, uh, talking to, who you know were you know interested in the book and stuff, like they were very understanding when when you know they sort of heard you know like who was publishing it and you know what you know what what their deal was and thing you know they were like oh yeah that yeah you got to do that you know like n there wasn't there wasn't any like hard feelings or anything and and I feel like like any one of these publishers you know that you know future works i you know could could see myself you know doing work you know again every book's its own thing yeah i mean listen man just make this a hit mm -hmm. make sure. this thing a hit and then uh, you get to stay in that space and you get mm -hmm. to stay commanding those figures and stuff like that man it's it's like mid december 2019 right now while we're having this conversation uh your life is going to be different around this time next year uh kiss your kids have mm -hmm. have a real good time right now because you're going to be at miami book festival 
Like they're gonna they're gonna have you on the road, my friend, man, and you're gonna be very busy. And then the year after that, I anticipate at least two or three foreign editions of this thing, and it's gonna bring you other places to promote the thing sure, as yeah. well. Each of these foreign editions becomes an extra income stream. Mm -hmm. I received ridiculous checks from France mm -hmm. for for uh, for my stuff, man, and like little trickles here and there with with other stuff. Uh, this is this is going to be a huge book, dude. Sure, yeah. I, I, I hope you're braced. Uh, yeah, I'm, re I'm ready. I mean, I've, I've had hit books before, but this is the first one where it's not just work for hire. Yeah, this ain't job or shit. Exactly, yeah. And this ain't, and this ain't cutting the pie right. with some schmuck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is all you. Right, yeah. Well, the thing that I'm, I'm, I'm banking on this... Because I want somebody to ask questions too, right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Commiserate with, yeah, yeah. Like I would, I like, like you're gonna, you're gonna experience things that I never have. Mm -hmm. But I'm not far behind. Sure, yeah. And and it's like, Tom, what do I do? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I need that. I, yeah. want, I want some Pittsburgh motherfucker mm -hmm. to that I could pull on their yeah, coat and, yeah. and be like, what do I do here, mm -hmm. man? It's a good feeling, man. I'm so proud of you, dude. Oh, thanks. And I'm yeah, super stoked. It. And watching this thing grow every step of the way. I'm the first customer in line. Sure, yeah. Waiting for this thing. Yeah, and I I would have been too. Like like this is And that's why you make the book. Right, exactly. It's it's wish it's wish fulfillment because it is like as a fan of Jack Kirby, he did like one autobiographical store like uh, uh, street code where it's like him as a little kid and and getting in gang fights and stuff and it was like like 12 pages or something and it's like and he did it like at the very like pretty close to the end of his career and it's like Kirby has like thousands and thousands and thousands of pages. So much of it is like just, you know, nonsense. And it's like, why didn't he do 100 pages, 50 pages of this, 100 pages, 200, 300? Like, give us your life story. He had no interest in that. He had no interest in like sort of telling his life story, you know, a la, you know, Stan Lee or whatever. He had no, like he had no, he, he like, to him it was all about this like entertainment product that he was making. But it's like, that's, that's the story I want to know. That's the story like everybody wants to know it's like yeah okay we like all these you know fantastic foreign stuff but like we want to we want to know about the guys who 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 did this stuff so it is it's like wish fulfillment and then um sort of putting it in kirby's voice it is it like i wished there was like that kirby had sort of laid out a you know this was what happened to me this is how it happened i would love love to read that uh and written in like a somewhat clear you know easy to follow way and it just it it doesn't exist he just he, he just wasn't that guy. He wasn't going to do that. He wasn't going to rest on his laurels or talk about the old days. When people would ask him about the old days, uh, in some ways it was kind of like pulling teeth. He'd usually just want to talk about whatever the new thing he's working on. And he was he was always a very um, sort of generous uh, interviewee in that he would like he would do he would be like a good improv guy where it, like they'd suggest a premise. And then he'd run with it, you know, whether it was something he believed in or not, or whether he, you know, he would just kind of like, oh, okay, you know, you know, what, well, what did you think of the demon? And, you know, like, you know, he was like, <laughs> yes, and, you know. Right, right. Yeah, like as soon as you were talking about that, the demon conversation from that one radio show popped up to <laughs> yeah. my mind. When he fully forgets. Yeah, that demons he are have been with us for centuries, and it's like, yeah, for may, possibly forgetting that he did a character that was called the demon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No etrigan on the mind, right at that very moment, man. So this leads us into uh, the research aspect, man. What uh, you're doing a lot of work so that we don't have to. Sure. Uh, so in order to make this. Th to put this together, you have to handle it in a journalistic fashion. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that you like cross reference yeah. your sources mm -hmm. so that you can make the comprehensive biography of the guy and knowing that, you know, Mark Avanier is going to be holding a microscope up to this thing. Everybody's ready with their red pen. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, so and it's it's in like the comics world where like people are inclined in that direction to begin with in yeah. a big way of like constantly looking you know for errors you know right so with all that stuff in mind how, what lay that part of the work out on the table like and let's get into that man because this is the back end work that can take as much time if not longer than the actual pencil to paper sure for sure yeah i mean in in some ways it's like a lifetime in the making um, like I do, you know, I, I do think about, you know, just sort of looking over your shoulder with with hip hop family tree, seeing like sort of how you did that, where it was like you, this is something that that you've been interested in a really long time, fan of un, you, you had an under, you have an understanding of it. So you kind of have like a general idea 
of like A, B, C, D, how the whole thing goes, like to some degree or another. You have a gen, which is great because not everybody goes into a project with that. And I feel like that's essential. You have like, a, and so that's like with this, I have this like general idea of the, the Kirby story. It's something that I've been studying a really long time and, and just for fun, you know? And, um, and almost like my understanding of the 20th century comes from my understanding of Kirby. It's kind of, you know, like you learn things in school, you know, okay, this happened, but like my understanding of the cause, it's uh, cause and effect is so informed by what I've studied of Kirby where it's like, okay, World War II, this, this, and this, and Kirby was doing this, 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 and that at that time. And then in the fifties, Kirby was doing this, this, you know, and then it's like the sixties, the seventies, okay, Vietnam War, blah, blah, blah. you know, like, like my understanding of, of history, like studying Kirby kind of like reinforced that, like really gave it a spine, you know, to, to, to fit all that information around. So I have this like, um, internal understanding of the story of Jack Kirby. So that's my starting point. I have that. So it's like, okay, I know something like this. And then it's like, okay, I kind of remember, like maybe, the, you know, you, like then you go to the, um, like the research to kind of fill in the gaps or to double check where it's like, okay, I think that, you know, he did this, this, and this with that guy. But let me, let me just check for sure. Cause like maybe, maybe that's, uh, like a false memory or, you know, whatever, you know, like, let me check. So, so then that's where like the research is like sort of fill in the gaps. And then, um, you know, you start diving deep into it and then it's, it's like, you know, then you're kind of like, you're, um, figuring out like the right questions to ask and, 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 and you know, the right questions to ask because yeah. you've been so steeped in this your entire mm -hmm. life, man. And I think that's a crucial piece. Like, like, uh, you gotta know, what the questions are yeah and you gotta ha you gotta have questions because sure. how are you, we gonna separate this from everything else if, mm -hmm. if you, like you don't answer some some crucial questions man but i cut you off keep going oh yeah sure and, and um like doing a, a work that's semi-chronological like uh you know like fantastic four grand design that was semi-chronological uh you know my um inclination it would be to sort of jump around but when you do things uh you know somewhat chronologically it like you do like you do sort of see a lot of the cause and effect and you start connecting dots that that you know okay i knew this this and this but when i'm coming at them one after the other i'm really starting to see oh wow this really did you know lead to this or or these bunch of things were all clustered over here like i mean just just like like a real simple one it's just like okay jack kirby he's known for working on superheroes and it's like okay what's the first superhero you worked on and like you know you'd think maybe it's this maybe it's, maybe it's captain america maybe it's you know the owl or whatever but it was um uh blue beetle which like i knew jack Kirby worked on blue beetle i knew it was early but like nobody when they hear blue beetle they don't think of jack nobody thinks of jack Kirby. but that's mr superhero that's the first superhero comic he worked on was blue beetle like that that was kind of yeah, kind it's of called Blue Beetle. Yeah, the, I knew he worked on an old one called Blue Bolt. Blue Bolt, yeah, Blue Bolt's in there too. But Blue Beetle, pre, Blue Bolt Beetle predates when, like, in Kirby's early, 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 early work, he wasn't a comic book guy yet. He was a comic strip guy, right? And it was a Blue Beetle comic strip. Dig. Yeah, Dig. And that and that was kind of like a, a Phantom, you know, Lee Fox Phantom kind of thing. And is this the character that like Charlton will buy this character? Or yeah, that's it's coincidence. Yeah, it's what? it's the character that like we usually associate with Ditko. Right. It's that, it's that, I mean, it's, it's like, there's like a Dan Garrett and it like, there's a couple, but it's, it's the same character, you know, uh, like the same essential, it's the same piece of IP. Right. Uh, Fascinating. Yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to conceptualize what your workspace must look like, like with the, with the writing desk, we'll say, and what are the stacks of Kirby ephemera and books and magazines that are helping guide you yeah. along the way, man. Like, what are some good examples? Yeah, it's, I mean, it, yeah, and it is, it's piles. It's piles it of stuff. Yeah, it's piles of stuff. And, um, you know, some of the comics themselves. Sure. Um, but, the, you know, like, I think I have every issue of the Jack Kirby Collector, you know, that, you know, Perfect. so, so that's, that's, that's kind of like a gathering place because so much of what we know about Jack Kirby comes from sort of like fanzine interviews, this and that. And, um, the Jack Kirby Collector is kind of like a clearinghouse for that. It's like they, a, a hub where it's like, okay, here's this interview from this. Here's it. You know, they've just been sort of like gathering anything Jack Kirby related and, you know, like a magnet or whatever, just like, you know, sucking it. So, so that's like a great resource. I have the, uh, like the Greg Theakston books. He was like a very early, like he sort of predates the Jack Kirby Collector. He was like sure. a very early, um, you know, uh, Jack Kirby, uh, historian or what, whatever. 
and um, you know, like he's got great stuff. You know, um, that that one video interview, that five yeah. minute uh, joint where where Kirby's talking about the war and literally has a flashback before our eyes. Right. Like w- while he's talking, he's like, mm-hmm. "It was a fucking yeah. massacre." Yeah. Like he says the f word. You know, mm-hmm. you never hear him say the f word. You right. never read it in an interview. Well, yeah, that's a funny, th- and that's that's been a thing with this book is. Like Jack Kirby in his like he had you know like how he would present himself to fans, which I think everybody ha- has like there's you know you're not just a hundred percent yourself when you're interacting professionally or whatever, but um, I think I'm close. But <clears throat> okay, go ahead. You, but uh, he like just in normal like you know he was you know he'd, he'd, he'd curse all the time you know and it's kind of weird when somebody who's sort of like known for sort of somewhat wholesome entertainment is like oh motherfuck this you know but he was and 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 he. He would get extremely angry sometimes because he what like, I mean, it, I think it's part of the job description maybe that like you you're bottling up a lot and, and then if you went through a war and stuff you're sitting down drunk and, and like yes boss yes boss you know and you're like you know you're seething <laughs> and so and sometimes it, and there's you know a different story Gil Kane talks about like being at at lunch with Jack Kirby. And like, you know, something about like Stan Lee, you know, the subject came up or whatever. And he's like, oh, rip his head off. You know, like just this like insane, you know, kind of kind of just, you know, just seething beneath the surface. And it is kind of like, how much of that to include? Right. (laughs) Right. You know, is he just going to be like cursing like a sailor, like, you know, through the whole thing? And that's a fascinating thing about this exact project, too, because you have to be the final stop when it comes to what is on the page and what i mean by that is uh some editor at you know 10 speed books isn't going to be as substantive to the story as you are like he doesn't know kirby like you know it i mean right and and i i think that's a given like i think i think everybody understands that that like okay i'm the authority on this material but like i mean they got a team of like proofreaders and and, and they come up with like they pull out some good stuff where it's, you know, like, uh, you know, oh, the way this, you know, uh, I'm tr- trying to think of a specific, but like there w- it would be a thing like, oh, they researched how to spell uh, uh, Gabriel, uh, what was the guy's name? Who, who Al Gabriel. I had Al Gabriel spelled wrong. They, f- they found the real spelling of Al Gabriel. And like my spelling was like a spelling that some of the old Captain Americas have, but it's not the, it's not his actual, you know, so stuff like that. So like these, these guys know what they're doing. Like, and, and they can do that with like any subject. But, but yeah, I'm, I'm the specialist. Right. And, and the reason I even bring that up is because, you know, if they were going to like try to talk you out of this piece or that piece or or like uh should he be using a barracks language Mm -hmm. here uh you have to step in and say yes he should be yeah and and you have those kind of you know kind of like just just like as a creator you have those kind of things internally in your your own head too where it's like is this the way to do it is that the like and and you know as like a pretty obvious example is sort of like do i draw a realistic jack kirby or a reader identification you know cartooned Jack Kirby, you know, like these are just, and it, it's like, you know, you can make arguments, you know, for or against it, but it ultimately comes down to me. Like that's, you know, like, like, yeah, I got to make that this, and that, that's the difference between, you know, my Jack Kirby biography and, and your Jack Kirby biography, you know? Whenever I was putting the hip hop books together, um, each of the four volumes sort of happened the same way when it comes to arc. Um, I basically cobbled together the, the strips and would do them every every week you know two pages a week two pages a week with no major thought into like how this book is going to like round out Mm -hmm. when i got about 75 percent of the book done then i was able to kind of see what the arc and how this book was going to shape up and how it was going to end uh is there something emerging here like i don't want to use the word theme because uh we're we actually like apply creative work and we're not just in right, a classroom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's the story? What's Kirby's story, man? Yeah. Is it a sad story? Like like when we hear a- about Kirby, his story, you know, get Kirby back his art. He didn't benefit from this. He didn't benefit from that. Um, it, it sounds sad. It doesn't sound like a like a happy story. But the truth is he, w- he was working constantly. He was doing just fine. Like... The, yeah, the thing they always point to is he had a house in California with a pool, right. <laughs> you know, like, and, and it's like, okay, 
yeah, he had a house in California with a pool, but like, okay, uh, you know, the, the Hulk is worth more than that. You know, the Beast from X Men is worth, you know, ten uh, houses with pools. Or you know, that doesn't mean he wasn't ripped off and that he wasn't frustrated. That's true. But but yeah, like it it and, and the ending, the ending has changed. Like from the time I first started learning about Jack Kirby to now, the ending of the story has changed because for a long time it was. His kids don't 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 get anything from it. His kids don't don't get an ounce of anything from anything he created, other than um, I think maybe they're still like his. I think his family still gets uh, payments for like Fourth World stuff from DC. But it was like all that stuff he created at Marvel. The stuff he's like most famous for, nothing, no, and not even credit, not even credit. You know, uh, but that's changed. You know, his. Um, family you know they they came to like a sort of terms with 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 um with disney and it, it involved a lot of lawsuits and um it was about to go to the supreme court and that's when sort of the okay you know and the the deal which we don't know the circumstances are but it seems like everybody's happy the deal and and you know and you know and so so it like that's a really happy ending that's a you know yeah yeah i was uh i was at a party at in a Decatur, Georgia, when when uh, Dragon Con was going on, and when that settlement occurred, at this party uh, were a few people in the know, very close to the Kirby fam. I heard the details, man, and we'll talk after. Okay, yeah, I can't I can't <laughs> wait to hear. You know, and that that might. Uh you know that that will definitely be helpful information to have, whether I divulge it in the yeah, book or not. Yeah, you can't divulge. No, of, it. of course I won't. But I'm saying it will inf- it will inform some of the uh, you know subtler uh, you know uh, the, the little body English yeah, uh, yeah, of, right, the, right, right. of the book. But um, yeah, like you know, and and so some of the things that have happened since then have sort of uh, made me feel like very confident in my sort of understanding of the story. Of Kirby, like as as you know, like like I was talking about that sort of like internal understanding of his story that I have, that I'm still like working very hard to sort of verify the bits and pieces because some of it you can't verify. Some of it you would need to be Stan Lee Little or be Jack Kirby to to really verify for sure. So I have to like you know tread very carefully in those areas. But one of them was, um, you know, like uh, uh, who created Iron Man, and it was it was always okay. It was. Uh, I mean, well, for the longest time with any of these characters, it would be like, oh, Stan Lee. Who created Captain America? Stan Lee. Like, that was the answer <laughs> to all of it. But um, it was like, okay, Stan Lee, Larry Lieber, and Don Heck. Stan Lee, you know, script by, or, or uh, plot by Stan Lee, script by Larry Lieber, and then uh, art by Don Heck. So, okay, that's issue one, Iron Man. But to me, I thought, well, Kirby has to be like the co-creator, maybe, maybe the primary creator, because... He drew the cover, and what we know about these, you know, comics was that the cover was drawn months before the interiors. So whoever ends up drawing the interiors, the co- and and the cover isn't just like the word Iron Man or what. It's it's a comic. It's right. three panels of who is Iron Man, and he's grabbing all the little parts of his armor, and who is you know it, it, grabbing the boots, grabbing the this, and then you got you know the and so it's like okay, that right there is the first Iron Man comic. So like Jack, so like to me, Jack Kirby. Even though, like, there was no, you couldn't, you know, there wasn't, like, documentation of that. It seemed, like, reading between the lines, I believed very strongly that, you know, Jack Kirby was at least the co-creator of Iron Man. And then now, post-settlement, Jack Kirby's credited as co-creator of Iron Man, you know, like, according to, to Disney Marvel. So so it is, like, okay, my instincts, I, like, I'm, I'm confident in my instincts about, about a lot of these things. That's very cool, man. Uh, we recently posted a very successful video for, for us. Uh, we were unpacking the Kevin Eastman uh, Comics Journal. Loved it. Interview, uh, <laughs> so good. Right, that, like it was such a ball. And, and yeah. you know, that's one of those legendary interviews that, we, that we've that we all known mm-hmm. and talked about for sure. basically the entire tenure of our friendship. Uh, there was the Jack Kirby interview. Uh, that that Gary did was mm-hmm. it Gary that yeah did Gary thing? yeah mm-hmm. and uh, where where he does say s- stuff about creating Spider Man, uh, which was controversial to people. Do you have this in in the uh, in the book? It is in the book, and I'm just laughing because uh, uh, I won't say why I'm laughing. But <laughs> uh, and, and before we get there, yeah, sure. Let's uh, 
let's unpack the Kirby interview from Comics Journal. Like, mm-hmm. let's 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 do an episode about that. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim, let's get over here. Like, we'll 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 put that one together, man. Like, all three together, that would be a, a fun one to unpack. That to me, that's one of the classic uh, Comics Journal interviews. But yeah, yeah. I, I mean, why, yeah, why, why just, were you laughing? Again? Well, the quick story, <laughs> without going into it, is I got in an argument with a department store Santa. About Jack Kirby's role in the creation of Spider-Man. You gotta tell us. <laughs> you gotta tell us. <laughs> Maybe when we're unpacking the interview, but but that's 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 I mean that's that's the most interesting way to tell the story is is the the the, the quick way. But yeah, the the route to Spider-Man is you know it's a tangled web or whatever. But I lay it out in the book, and um, you know I I you know very confident in it and how I laid it out and it it makes. You know what I've just you know and 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 you know there you know it's 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 out there it's a it's a complicated tangled story I don't know how how far you want to get into the story of Spider Man but before we get there man like I'm we're here I'm in the I'm in the business of selling your book sure and I want this to go viral mm-hmm. let's hear about the fucking Christmas store Santa man yeah um it was just uh you know like um. Just sort of, you know, just sort of, you know, talking to to a, you know, it was this time last year, and just like sort of talking, you know, to a Santa at a <laughs> department store, and just, you know, hey, what, you know, what do you do? This talking about comics or whatever. He's like, yeah, you know, Jack Kirby. He's like, yeah, I'm a big fan. Of, like saying, oh, I'm a big fan of Jack. You brought, you brought up Jack Kirby to him. Um, you brought him I, up to I forget what triggered the conversation about comics, but it went to obviously this Santa was a big comics fan, and so you know, we got to talking. And talking about Jack Kirby, like, oh, I love Jack Kirby. And he's like, you know, it's really funny. Like, Jack Kirby, he he created pretty much everything, uh, you know, except, you know, at Marvel, like, except for Spider-Man. You know, and a lot of people say Jack Kirby created Spider-Man, but, but you know, that's that's pretty crazy. What, and, like, it, like I, I didn't go into the full story with it, but I was kind of like, well, you know, that actually, you know, there's a, an argument to be made. <laughs> like, I didn't, you know, unload the full thing. But, you know, that's that's pretty much it. You know? Okay, okay. Yeah, so it wasn't too much of an no, argument. No, it, it wasn't no like... Fisticuffs. Right. It, it, the story's better when I just say it in the abstract because <laughs> it sounds like the movie Elf <laughs> when Buddy gets in the fist fight with Artie Lang. Well, I've known you for 20 years and I've known you to get passionate. Sure, yeah. So when you say fight with... Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh man, I've, I've seen, I've seen uh-huh. uh, the energy. I mean, I've seen the Kirby crackle I, above your head. Yeah, it, there, was, there was a fight going on in here, but it wasn't going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, man! Um, but yeah, the Spider-Man thing—it's super interesting. There's so many bits and pieces to it, and it's like there's no reliable narrator. You know, it's like Rashomon. It's like right. you can't. Qu- I mean, uh, out of everybody, Joe Simon has like a great memory, but he's a bullshitter. He's as much of a bullshitter he's as Stan Lee. Exactly. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's a, a P.T. Barnum. You know, just just like Stan, and then Stan has a bad memory and he's P.T. Barnum and then and then Jack you know just has like no no memory for this stuff really you right. know um, like he defaults towards oh yeah I created that and you know what like nine times out of ten he's right so but it, it is you know it is like I I believe that uh, you know Jack Kirby uh, is one of you know like I think you know five or six people who created Spider-Man but the the <laughs> Yeah. Would would Ben Cooper be one of uh, <laughs> one? Of yeah, his? yeah, well, yeah. He might. Yeah, yeah. He's in there. He's in there for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. Be, uh, but uh, you know, like it's kind of like when it comes down to it, it's like okay, um, if you only got you know room on the boat for for you know two of the creators of Spider Man, it's it's uh, uh, Ditko and Stan Lee. You know, but but Jack Kirby, like Jack Kirby was early and uh, instrumental and there at like various stages because it was like it was a th- you know. Joe Simon says he came up with Spider-Man like all by himself, like all by himself. But the um, the the logo for Spider-Man and the this and that for Spider-Man was sitting in Kirby's files after the breakup of Simon and Kirby. I don't I don't think like Jack Kirby broke into Joe Simon's house and stole you know. So it's like what's it do? If Jack Kirby had nothing to do with Spider-Man, what's it do? Like why does he have the thing? But um, uh, you know, so so as I see it. The, the story of Spider-Man was um, Joe S- Simon and Jack Kirby, like a million other things, they came up with this idea, okay, let's do a character called S- Spider-Man. They didn't get very deep into it. Yeah. It was very, very... I, I think I remember there's like a web gun or something. Yeah, yeah. And and um, and and that like drawing... Uh, uh, Steve Ditko saw that drawing, but there it like we haven't been able to track it. We haven't been able to find it. Um, Joe Simon created a... like a fraudulent version of that drawing, but we haven't seen like the real drawing. Um, 
and and so they came up with this thing spider-man was one of a million things that they came up with in the 50s it got got shelved or whatever and then uh cc beck after the uh lawsuit between dc and fawcett and um captain marvel is no more Mm -hmm. so cc beck's out of a job and and he goes to them and uh you know, says like, you guys got anything? Like, you got a superhero? I, I, you know, something for me to work on, a superhero? And they weren't really doing superheroes by this point. You know, superheroes were kind of passe. So um, they dug around. We got this Spider-Man thing. And so like um, C.C. Beck and Jack Olick, who I, th- I think might, it might be Joe Simon's brother-in-law or something. Uh, but anyway, uh, they went off to work on Spider-Man and then they turned it into the Silver Spider and... Um, you know, and there's some pages of that that exist. It's very sort of cartoony and, and Captain Marvel-y. And then uh, um, Jack and, and Joe, uh, you know, Joe's doing some stuff at Harvey and then, you know, brings in Jack uh, and they're going to do like sort of a Spider-Man th- or they're going to do something with that Spider-Man concept. It ends up being the fly. Right. So a lot of, the, and so it's kind of like a lot of the fly's powers make more sense as like a spider power than, than a, you know, and he's got a lot of the powers of Spider-Man. He's got this like, they don't call it spider sense, but he's got this like a, hyper awareness where, you know, he can sort of, you know, spot things around. He can walk up walls. Um, and yeah, he, he has like, he has like a buzz gun, he calls it. But like there was a version, you know, like when it was Spider-Man, it was a, a web gun at some point. So anyway, um, Simon and Kirby break up, you know, go their separate, their, their, um, their sort of um, company that they started goes out of business with, um, with, uh, you know, basically a lot of the comics industry after um, after the comics code because their distributor was the same distributor as EC Comics. So they the distributor went out of business, owed them a bunch of money. They were done. They sold, you know, lock, stock, and barrel to Charlton. They sold, so, which is why you see like Bullseye coming out from Charlton. Like there's a bunch of different, you know. Um, so, and, and Joe Simon semi-retires from comics, goes into advertising, and then Kirby's just like, looking around for something, anything, um, and, <clears throat> you know, works at DC for a while. And then, and then, uh, that goes sour for a bunch of other reasons. And then he's back at Stan, you know, back with Stan Lee. And then it's kind of like, he keeps pulling out stuff like, Hey, how about this? Hey, how about, so it's like, okay, he takes sort of like challengers of the unknown, kind of retools it into fantastic four. Uh, he take you know, here's this, here's this, here's that. And then it's like, Jack, what else you got? And he's got this thing in his files called Spider-Man. You know, it's it's a logo. It's a it's a you know a drawing or whatever. And it's a script. And it's unclear how much of this body of work Jack Kirby contributed to before he pulled it out of of mothballs. But he obviously contributed something. I would say he probably cre- contributed a lot to it. it. Is is my guess? Did he contribute everything? You know. Uh, and, and and so anyway, he starts work on that. So he creates a uh, Spider-Man comic that that um, sounds like that people haven't seen. Steve Ditko saw it. Stan Lee saw it. Jack Kirby saw it. And St- Steve Ditko describes it, and it sounds a lot like The Fly and a lot like Silver Spider. Um, it do- but it has the kid's an orphan. Peter Parker's an orphan. Uh, he's got a a gun that shoots webs. It's like okay. It looks different, like like it's it's on his wrist as opposed to like, but it's still a gun that shoots webs. He walks up walls. He's got, a, you know, so he's got all these Spider-Man elements. It's not the Spider-Man we know and love, but it is a early initial version of Spider-Man. Like, is he the end-all, be-all creator of Spider-Man? No, but is he a creator of it? I, I, I'd say yes. And, and so Ditko looks at this and does his own thing, like complete departure from it, but still bearing some of the DNA of this, of this creation, you know, and, and Ditko admits to that. He doesn't say like, oh, you know, he, like Ditko talks about how important, like the actual um, execution of something is, as opposed to like the ethereal idea of it. But like the idea, ideas are still very important to Steve Ditko. So, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. There's a little, and you mentioned Ben Cooper, the you know in the 50s they had that this ben cooper spider-man costume no hyphen spider-man looks a lot like it's yellow but it looks a lot like the spider-man costume and uh, you know i i personally believe that steve ditko was aware of this costume and because the spider-man costume 
maybe the greatest costume in superhero history. Such a great co- and so different. And it's like, where where did this come from? This is amazing. This came out of the clouds. It's so amazing. And then it's like, oh, well, there's actually this very popular Halloween costume that's been around for about 10 years right. that it looks a lot like. I feel like there's a story there uh, with the corporate big wigs. Oh, totally. like, like Ben Cooper calling up Martin Goodwin. Like, I'll let you keep your Spider-Man character. I won't sue you, but you have to give me such a good deal sure. on licensing mm-hmm. all your Marvel characters for them shitty little Ben Cooper costumes. Yeah, and uh, that's another thing where it's like, you got to read between the lines, but it makes a lot of sense. And it's it. Um, there's a lot of stories in comics like that. Like uh, uh, I think Ray Harryhausen and EC Comics was sort of a similar thing. Ray Bradbury. Ray, Ray Bradbury. That's it. Yeah, where it's like uh, you know they you, you, rip- for, you forgot to give me my uh, royalties for that one story, man. Here's yeah. a, here, here's, here's a bill. An invoice for yeah. fifty bucks. Exactly. So it, like it seems like exactly the kind of deals that that get made. But yeah, it is funny that uh, like the first licensed property that you know, the new Marvel made was Ben Cooper Halloween costumes. There yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> there it is right there. So you just have like five minutes talk about the the, uh, the origins of the Spider-Man character. How many pages uh, does that encompass of the, the Kirby book? Because the, the real question is, in a 200-page book, how, how do you cover, like, what do you cover? Uh, oh, it, yeah. It's this, and it was the same thing with, like, Fantastic Four Grand Design. And you probably had the same thing with X-Men Grand Design. It's like... You know, you gotta cut it off, so and you gotta cut a lot. Um, but yeah, it, it's probably like a page and a half because I think like in the you know a page and a half, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Because there's there's like a little there's like maybe half a page in the Simon and Kirby era, sort of prime in the pump of like oh here's the spider here's CC Beck here's the Spider Man, and then there's like maybe a full page in the '60s era of like Jack Kirby you know unfolding this uh, you know thing and showing Stan and and bringing in Ditko. And... One of the takeaways that I got from the Gary Groth interview from from Comics Journal was um, how he he would have so much machismo, bravado, talk that smack, be an alpha dog in every circumstance apart from being employed. You know what I mean? Like, like he he's he's drop he's gonna threaten a guy to smash his fingers in a in a piano. He's going to uh, bark real loud at the gangsters who are coming to Eisner Iger Studios, threatening uh, Will Eisner, telling them that they're gonna have to accept the uh, their towel service. Um, but he seemed to be, you know, a good boy when well, it came to. Uh, getting paid i mean think about your grandfather's stories from when he was a teenager and when he was in his 20s versus you know the the pap pap that you knew you know it's like two different guys and it is kind of like you know like a 20 something a, a teenage kirby and stuff is a different animal than 44 year old kirby 50 year old kirby 60 year old kirby but he like that's the perception the perception with kirby was that like he just sort of rolled over just like, but throughout his career he you know he was fighting for these things he was asking for he wasn't just like you know like a babe in the woods but it's like what choice do i like like he would push for these things but it's like the the next issue of fantastic fours do i gotta draw that that thing you know i got kids i got kids counting on me i you know and that's a lot of his conversation with you know wally wood was sort of the first guy to have like a bunch of problems with stan lee in the 60s yeah and then like he left, you know, a principal. He could have stayed. He left, you know, he left, you know, you know, went off to find a better deal. But it's like, you know, with him, you know, and and he said to Kirby, "Hey, come with me, you know, like like let's, like, you know, fuck Stan, let's, you know," and Kirby's like, "Look, you're a single guy, you know, like like you don't have any kids and stuff. Like I got a whole family, you know, like I I can't I can't I can't roll like that." And then, you know, a couple of years later, same thing with Ditko. Ditko's like, "Come on, Jack, let's go. You know, you're not you're you you know there's there's only so far you can go with with Stanley and and with Martin and." And Jack's like, look, you know, you you don't have any kids or anything, you know, like I, you know, so it's like you got the things you're pushing for while you're still doing this like insanely demanding, time consuming, energy consuming job. But he did, like, he did, he did. There were a lot of things promised, to, a lot of things he negotiated, and and things that were promised to him. But uh, you know, he was dealing with people who were very good at making sure that that those things sort of remained handshake promises and never got committed to paper and so that's like the big lesson that that we all learned from kirby is like if it's not on paper it it doesn't it doesn't mean a thing 
Yeah, and once again, unpacking that Kevin Eastman interview, yeah. you learn that things on paper don't mean much either, man, because it, it could yeah. become that pissing contest of who can afford more lawyer fees than the next guy, mm -hmm. you know? Um, are you, were you mindful of the different eras of Kirby and attitudes and stuff when you were covering uh, the different eras in the story? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting sort of seeing um, fashions evolve and see, seeing, like, because it is like, you know, we think of these things as discrete eras as like, you know, the 30s, the yeah. 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, what these look like. But like I'm working on a thing where ne it's like, like I never worked on a story like that before where like there's a continual and there's this character who's like going through all of the, And it's kind of like, oh, OK, maybe it's time to abandon like this style of this. That but at where? At what point, like at what point does the 40 because it's not like it's 1949 and then the, the the clock turns over and now it's 1950 and, and like we throw out all our old clothes and we junk our car or whatever you know so it's you know it's interesting and, and i'm sure i'm sure that's the thing where like you could maybe nitpick the most is there but fuck those exactly. guys and who the fuck who the fuck's still alive to do that yeah fuck you know? those guys yeah, yeah i'm not i'm not looking to like i'm looking to get you know like like a, an audience not, i'm not looking to satisfy like three uh you know in, like uh antique uh, car aficionados yeah, or whatever yeah. who know? gives a fuck yeah. about those guys that's what I, that's what that's what i'm saying yeah you get that stuff you get enough of it you vent to eddie p right yeah you know what i mean don't don't ever address them <laughs> on twitter or any of that bullshit mm -hmm. man it, it is it is uh i mean like we've been at this a long time so like we're pretty seasoned at this, but like, like maybe when things are you changing know. for you, I promise you, dude. Yeah, you're it's a different to, world. Okay, you're, you're going to be getting a lot of feedback constantly, sure. mm -hmm. and you're going to have to like know what to do with it, man. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, man, I'm prepping you now. Yeah, I mean, I was, and I'm making myself available to you now. It's funny because I thought that it was going to happen with Fantastic Four. I thought, okay, batten down the hatches. Fantastic Four Grand Design One came out, batten down the hatches. I'm about to 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 get some There's shit. version, and then it's like. Didn't really get any shit. And then it's like, okay, issue two's coming out. Now I like get put on the helmet, I'm ready for, and then not yet. I mean, maybe it'll be de delayed reaction, but it's, it, you know, but but it, maybe this is something different, you know. The, the reason I say that is, well, one, it with the deal that you've made, they're, they're gonna wanna recoup. Sure. So they're going to promote you. Yeah. And they're going to sell this book. Mm -hmm. It's going to sell. Mm -hmm. uh, they're gonna make sure that that happens, man. Uh, and. You have a certain number of units, man. There's a threshold, uh, and if there's a switch that gets flipped, where you know in this in the the culture that we have now, it's like anti-bully. It's mm -hmm, like sure. it's like a thing that like so that means that you can't punch downward. Um, there's a perception, certainly in comics criticism, where if you have certain number of units sold, it's a if it's a invisible number, man. Mm -hmm. uh, but eventually articles could come out where you're getting flat out dissed and it is a compliment because in this bull anti-bully culture they're punching upward yeah i i mean i um there there's like a vert like I've, I've heard people talk about things of like up to a certain point in their career like most of what they got has been positive but then yeah you yeah. reach a certain popularity and then it's like your fair game yeah you know? like, yeah, yeah. So, so, I, yeah so i'm saying you're going right. to enter the fair game position yeah. man which is a good place to <laughs> right. be and just and just and just reframe your mind sure uh because when the little douchebags come out and write their little articles uh it is punching upward they perceive you as above them because they couldn't do that kind of uh harsh criticism with somebody that everybody agrees is garbage. Sure, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, the other thing that usually uh, I take solace in is most of the people who are in the comments, depending on the site or whatever, uh, many of them are probably comics creators. Depends on if You're it's right, like, you yeah. know. So uh, just know and smile <laughs> knowing that, say, one copy or like one issue of Transformers G.I. Joe is probably more comics out in the wild than every single one of those people put together mm -hmm. you know and certainly kirby like mm -hmm. there will be more copies of that you know compound that with whoever pops up in the comments and stuff like yeah that. i get like you know like when i did transformers versus gi joe like you were there you know took a lot of crap initially from like the transformers yeah. fan fandom and then and, and um you know and then all these years later it's kind of like this like Oh, wasn't that so great? Like, oh, I don't like GoBots, but like that Transformers was so. And then a couple of years from now, it's gonna be like, oh, wasn't GoBots so great? And blah, blah. It's it's a it's a weird like this kind of a project, um, is 
unique and, and odd for a creator because you 100% own it, uh, which means that it's all on you, but it is a public figure. So there's mm -hmm. a sense of ownership that everybody oh, sure. has. I mean, remember. Very protective of Jack Kirby. And, and I would be protective of it. Like, as a right. reader of somebody else's Jack Kirby book, I right. would be like, hey, come on. You, you crossed a line there. You know? Right. So or, or Stan Lee, conversely, too. You know? So like, like, you know, Stan Lee's in this book, too. And guess what? You know, some of the stuff uh, that, that we see Stan Lee do in this comic isn't part of, like, the, you know, like, like the... Hey, true believers. The sweet, yeah, that, that sweet image. So, yeah. Um... I guess like, but the difference between like a Transformers or whatever is like prior to working on like Transformers versus G.I. Joe, I didn't really consider myself part of like the Transformers community. Or yeah. the Jack, but I'm part of the comics community. I'm part of the Jack Kirby comics community. So it's like, you know, any crap I get, it's like, it's it's from my people. So that, that it might, you know, it might mean a little more than, you know, than an outside group just, coming out. Just call out. your homeboys, <laughs> yeah, exactly. man. Just call your homeboys. Don't, yeah. don't get caught up in any this, of those this, embarrassing... Yeah, uh, this is all, uh, you know, this is all, um, you know, ephemeral at this point. Like, might not, you know, like, it might be universally <laughs> praised. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's going to be great. Like, I, from everything I saw, like, people are going to flip when they see this man. And with the little bit of announcements that, like, you know, the stuff on social media that you put out there... Uh, Many of the people were like saying they remember the Instagram. Sure, comic, yeah, you know, yeah. And what happened to the Instagram comic? Because it went away, and then some people were like, "Oh, I had a feeling that it went away because it was gonna, you know, come back in some." You Here know. it is, man. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. So that'll be like July 2020. Uh, there's going to be a trade paperback of uh, Fantastic Four Grand Design in 2020. There's going to be a, a, a treasury of Fantastic Four Grand Design next month. How's that January. for fast? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 twenty twenty is your year, man. Yeah. That, that's the year uh, that that you, that your life changes for the positive, and it's not like you were doing bad already. Right. Man. Yeah. Very cool, mm -hmm. man. Uh, that that is kind of as good a place to leave it as as any. But before we split, um, and I'm kind of putting you on the spot with it a little bit. But all this research you're doing and all these pages you've accumulated telling the Jack Kirby story. Uh, is there like one or two incredible things that you did learn that you would be willing to share with us uh, right now? There's like, I don't know if this is like a, a you could boil it down as a thing, to, but like, I don't, like the page that I sent you just yesterday, like the page I just finished, it's got like, there's this amazing quote from Jack Kirby, which is like so great. And it's like, I, um, wherever possible, I try to quote Jack Kirby in this. The thing is, um, when Jack Kirby would just be speaking extemporaneously, it doesn't translate to print very right. well, you know, because he would sort of like assemble a sentence where it's like, here's a word here, here's a word here, here's, and it would like be sculptural. By the way, this is how conversation works. Like, yeah. like the like the interviewer who can transcribe and create a good interview in print, that is a very uh, crucial skill yeah. that a lot of people don't have. But yeah, I've done, I've done it myself. I, and it's like, you take out all the you knows and the, yeah. Um, but uh, he, he had this great quote, and I, I ran it, so, like I just trimmed a little bit here and there, some of it for space. But he talks about like, okay, why did Jack Kirby leave Marvel? And there's a million reasons from the leave Marvel. But when asked, Jack Kirby, why did you leave Marvel? He goes on this long thing where he's saying, uh, you know, sometimes you create something that you don't want anything to do with. Have you ever read the book what makes sammy run and 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 so like i read this quote i'm like i gotta read this what makes sammy run so, so I, I read it great book and he's like uh, by bud schulberg i think and he he says stan is is sammy in what makes sammy run stan is, is sammy and he was uh, he was turning into something that i didn't want any i i i didn't want any part of i walked into the office one night and he was just sitting there in the dark dictating into a tape recorder and it's 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 like i had to leave i had to go i could you know and i I'd, I'd never heard that story before and and it's like so per and i'm just picturing the per and and it is like there was a like stan lee when kirby kirby met him as a teenager punk kid you know yeah um <laughs> in the in the in the comics journal interview with gary groff there's a story about uh simon and kirby go to the offices of Martin Goodman and young Stan Lee 
has an ocarina yeah, playing and is bouncing ocarina, around. Jumping like, around. Yes, sitting on the furniture, slamming doors in people's foot, playing pranks. Is that, that's in the book? That's in the book, yeah. This so, is going to be a fucking <laughs> dope book, man. Oh, wa yeah, watching like Stan Lee, because Stan Lee pops in here and he pops in here and it's it's uh, interesting seeing the development. But, um, and then, you know, when, when Kirby comes back and it's like adult Stan Lee, it's like Stan Lee looks older than Jack Kirby. Like yeah. you see these early photos of them together in like the late 50s, early 60s. And it looks like Stan's the older guy, like bald, wrinkly. And, and it was it was like, you know, comics has turned me into an old man. It was like that kind of thing. And just like, yeah. And then, um, you know, like the Marvel stuff starts picking up some steam and Grows stuff. more hair. Yeah. And, and yeah, <laughs> became very hair suit. And, 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 uh, and then like, yeah, one day Jack Kirby walks in the office and like this, you know, bald middle-aged gentleman all of a sudden has this like full head of hair, beard, <laughs> shades, you oh, know, the, and this whole, yeah, this whole like, um, uh, like this whole Austin Powers <laughs> look, go, and it's like, what the fuck, you know, and, and becomes very affected, like, like really like, you know, drinks his own Kool-Aid, buys his, and it's gotta be an odd, odd, odd thing to like, be standing next to you to, uh, like when you watch that happen so like like that and and, and for jack saying like that's why i left mark like because that's a, that's a very personal thing like that that says that he was sort of more personally invested in his um relationship to stan lee than than like you know he would maybe like want to admit like later like he would want to say like, oh no it's dollars and cents his business and, but and and in what makes sammy run there's sort of like a jack kirby character and there's a stan lee character and like they're friends like like uh you know like the jack kirby character is kind of like you know I, I i think sammy's a total piece of shit but i'm also like his his best friend probably his only friend you know and and like, really and so that's that's awesome uh just another thing kind of related to that um like looking at like pictures and things like that there's sort of like the famous issue of um uh of like one of the marvel comics where like they have the picture of the, the bullpen and you see them and it's like <clears throat> stan there's like the picture of stan lee and you know, no facial hair, bald, wearing sort of like a Frank Sinatra fedora kind of tilt with like the you know got this like sort of fan, uh, Frank Sinatra like a very like sort of you know fifties or forties look even middle aged. And then you have this picture of Steranko, enveloped in darkness, wearing this like mod suit, you know, uh, Van Dyke, you know, you know, full like he head of hair. And then flash forward like like i don't know a couple months or a year that's stan lee's look i think stan lee jacked steranko's look i think stan lee was kind of fascinated by this sort of charismatic young artist with this like strong sense of style who came in the artist and was just like oh i'm doing that and you know and uh, so that was some, like i never would have thought like oh yeah he he's he's taking you know steranko's style but it, it really you know seems like like he did that's the season finale of um, <laughs> mad men we should have all got <laughs> <laughs> uh what, let's Let's get the hell out of here, dude. Okay. You got pages to draw. Oh, you got sure. a very yeah. tight deadline. Mm -hmm. I have some business to do myself, dude. So, got to thank you for stopping by, man, sure. to have this conversation. We woke up to the announcement of yeah. this all, all over the internet, man, and it was it was crucial to uh, to get you in front of the kayfabe mm -hmm. audience, man, to like let everybody know the deal, dude. So kayfabers, like, subscribe, and follow the YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon. We'll let you know when new vids are available. And we have some cool stuff coming down the pike. I'll tell you about it afterwards, man. You're going to want to uh, be notified when our next videos go live.